Hi, I'm Paul, I'm Goss.com. I've been sent a couple of questions in how I got the 138 kilo wrist curl. Well, I'm going to show you how and why and, and, and the things that I did to, to achieve that goal. And um, it's not much different than what anybody else does. I just never allowed my body to adjust to what I was doing. And I had a, a, a few selections of different bars and uh, a routine that I followed uh, literally periodically, day in, day out. This is one of the bars I used, an extra long bar for the stability, you know, added a little bit more, so I had to use my stabilizing muscles. But with it being so thin, what it allowed me to do, having a, a smaller hand, was to actually get a wrap. So it simulated me actually being in a top row position with someone, and I would always hold the bar slightly higher when I did this. And this attacked my supination, so I really had to keep that rotation as well. Now, I'm not gonna go through how I wrist curled until the end, but that was how I did it, Seth, on a Monday. Now the rep ranges went from anywhere from 150, 200 sometimes, and I pyramid it down sometimes, I would pyramid up. I would never start with the same weight. So for example, on this bar I may start with 30 kilos on the first time I did it, and then go to 60 and 70 kilos, or I might just jump on and do 20 kilos, completely rep out, 30 kilos, 5 kilos. It really did depend on how I felt. When you start getting to the big weights, when I got the 138 kilo lift, you know, I was unable to lift heavy for a few weeks. It really does compress your joints and your bones. So I would always start with that one, as that would be the, the main way that I am wrestled. And then I'd move off then to what I consider the very best wrist curling bar. And it's just a piece of angle iron, short piece, two inch steel. And I would literally just put my fingers into my joints, as you can see, and I'll have it over my knee, as I like to say, I'm gonna crack on in a moment and show you what I did, but that is pretty much how it would be. When you let that come all the way down there, it really did put the pressure into your fingers. And if you turn it around, obviously, you can see I've got the roof on top of the house. So that would follow, okay? So, again, the rep ranges will differ, etc. And as you can see, one of them, I was gripping like that, and then the other is like that so it's not allowing the body to adjust. Day number three would be another wrapping day, but this would simulate holding a bigger hand, okay? So I would have the thumb around, but this time it's not big enough for me to connect, okay? So I would just wrap around, I would still have that type of grip, and then I would obviously just do my wrist curls. Again, targeting a different part of the wrist joint. Now I'm gonna to touch on that wrist joint before I move on. I'm a massive believer in, in, in building the wrist joint. A lot of stuff that's done today is done on pulleys and it pulls more into the fingers. Now, I believe that it's very difficult when you go onto a pulley if you're just isolating your fingers because you're not building the chain. The fingers will always go first. Now, there is ways of setting your elbows that connect your fingers, your hand and your wrist in one. And that's a technique that you've got to learn itself. And you can apply this on the machines, and I can touch on that on a, on a different video, but I'm not a massive fan of anything that's just into your fingertips there, because I do believe that if you set off in that position and I miss the match, you're only using the third of what you can uh, actually be using. So we move into session number four, the wrist curls, and again, so this will be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, yes, it, I did it that frequently. Sets would only be three to four sets. Um, I would always fail on my wrists, because you're using your hand and wrist every single day, whether it be opening the door, pouring the kettle, you're working, and I really feel they have to be shot, somewhat similar to your calves. So I would work that every single day, but I would never push the volume any higher than three to four sets. So I never really got broken down that much. So we're moving back after another wrapping day. We now move to another fat day, it's just a two inch bar. Again, over the wrist, and this time over the knee, I'm gonna show you basically how I did every variation. Okay, I would come in, I would turn to the side. As you can see when I'm turned to the side, when I stand up, I'm actually in my arm wrestling position, okay? So I turn to the side, I push the wrist slightly over, and if you just come round to the side here, yeah, my wrist curls never ever involved doing this. One, the weight would come off. Sometimes the bar could slip out your hand, but I always believe in keeping the pressure in your wrist. When you're, bring, when you're wrestling an opponent, that pressure is never off, so I never wanted to let it off. And it would just be a little tiny flicks. 
So they wouldn't even be reps, it would basically be more of a static and it would be flat to a little flick, just like that. Because once you get that little flick in, as soon as you get a little bore into your wrist, then you've got yourself in the, in the match, in my opinion. Okay? So when I'm doing that, I'm, I'm, I'm really doing it, it's, it's more time under tension than, than anything else. But like I say, I got up to some very big weights and, and it was achievable for me. And uh, day five, well, I've not got much of a left, but I used to do the flush out on the hands. And this is a little interesting one, is I would use the fat EZ bar. Now, when I did my wrist curls with this, I'd have my legs a little bit wider. Some guys who've got the bigger arms can do them that way, but I used to always find it, it, it hurt my wrist a little bit. So I went back under. And then when I went under, if you zoom in, if you come stand up above me now, and you look down at my wrists, you can see where my wrist is, where my wrist, in, wrist is positioned. Okay, so it's almost like this. So then I would all, I would use this as though I'd gone into a match and I was half in, half out. Yeah, and it, I would always feel as though when I got into that position, I felt mega, and I, I was into my opponent's hand, and that would be, as you can see, a very similar position. If I bring that round to the Okay, and I'm always then rotating back. I've got a little bit of rotation on, and that little bit of rise on that on that wrist. So, and I would absolutely go to failure on that. It would be lightweight, three sets again, hundreds and hundreds of reps, maybe two, three hundred reps. I mean, I think the best I ever got to was probably a, a thousand reps in that. In that, and my arms were pumped up smithereens, and then the day after, I was ready to go every year again. Now, that's my selection of wrist curling bars. There is an odd, odd other exercise I do every now and again, but again, that is for another day. So I hope this video helps. If you want to give it a bash or you, uh, you, you have any questions, put it in the comments below. I'm always there to help. Awoo, awoo, awoo.